friends. Welcome to our fourth episode in our YouTube series, Pagona Vision. Uh, very excited tonight. We are shooting here at Avian and Exotic Animal Care. We have our special guest, Dr. Stacy Leonetti, tonight. And we're, we're very excited because tonight we're really wrapping up uh, the preludes of episode two and three where we talked about husbandry and nutrition. And tonight we're going to be talking about the very important topic of bearded dragon health. So with that, I want to introduce Dr. Leonetti. I want to give you a little bit more background on her and the practice here, Avian Exotic Animal Care in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're very excited because she's qualified for her board certification in reptile and amphibian medicine. There's only 12 veterinarians in the whole world at this point in time that can say that. So we're excited. We're kind of spoiled because she's right down the road from us. Literally, our breeding facility is 10 minutes from this practice. And uh, we're happy to have her here tonight in, in discussing health of our bearded dragons. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here tonight as well. Um, as you said, reptiles are a special interest of mine. So I'm glad to help you guys out whenever I can. Um, I have been here for seven years. I graduated from University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine in 2006. Um, and I've been here ever since then. Uh, our practice is uh, one of the few in the country that actually is 100% exotic. So that's all we do. We don't see any dogs and cats, um, just reptiles, birds, small mammals. Um, and our practice has been here since uh, 1996. Started as a small house call practice and kind of built up to the uh, larger three doctor practice that we are today. We also wanted to add that they also mm -hmm. have their own YouTube channel. And yes. that's called? Yeah, our YouTube channel is Exotic Pet Vet TV Show. Um, so look us up because we put up a lot of really cute animal videos, um, interesting things, cute things that happen in our practice that we see every day. Yeah, and the practice is also very uh, involved on Facebook. So all you Facebook fans out there, make sure you check out Avian Exotic Animal Care on Facebook. To start things off tonight, what we're going to show you is what to expect when you take your bearded dragon into your local veterinarian. We're going to start out by doing a physical exam, show you what Dr. Leonetti covers. I think we're going to use Sienna for the yeah. exam, and I'll let mm -hmm. you go ahead and take over. All right. So um, usually when somebody first arrives, they're going to check in, and we're going to get some basic information. So uh, it's really important for your bearded dragon's health, as you guys know, um, to have proper husbandry, diet, lighting, heating, all of those kind of things. So we're going to go over all that with you at your appointment because we want to make sure that all of that is... Uh, where it should be because one of the most common reasons that we see illness in pet bearded dragons is because something isn't quite right in their care um, So that's something we go over at every appointment um, And so then once we talk about that stuff, we'll actually take a look at our beardy and so uh, Usually what we'll do we'll start out by um, putting her in the scale and getting a weight um, and we weigh everybody in grams uh, because that's a kind of the smallest unit um, so it's more accurate uh, for that to keep track of weight loss and weight gain. Um, and so then you'll usually see us kind of pick up your beardy and kind of hold them like this and we're going to check out several things. So I usually start at the head and kind of work my way backwards um, and we're looking at the eyes making sure that they're bright and clear. Um, anything that there's two of, we're kind of looking to make sure everything's symmetrical. So um, looking in the nose, making sure we don't see any sign of discharge around our nose, around our eyes, any sort of crust or anything like that around the mouth. Um, looking at the ears, um, not common to see ear problems, but every now and then we do. So we check that out. Um, if she'll let me, we usually try to get a good look in the mouth. And usually you can do that just by kind of grabbing on their little doolat there and pulling it open. Get a good look in there, make sure we don't have any um, sign of infection. Um, and then again, kind of work our way back. You know, we're looking at the skin, um, feeling, you know, for any lumps or bumps, feeling for any skin lesions. As you know, there's lots of skin infections and trauma and things like that that can happen with, with a beardy. So checking out their uh, legs and their joints, making sure everything moves like it should. We'll watch them walk around a little bit and make sure that that's all okay. Um, going back to um, palpating their belly. Um, bearded dragons store um, fat in their abdomen, so they've got a little fat pad right here and right here. So normally we can feel that when we're palpating. That's a way to help us make sure they're not too skinny or not overweight. And then we're feeling around in here for any other lumps or bumps that don't belong. We kind of you have to kind of know what's normal to be able to know what's abnormal. Um, and then work our way back, um, feeling down the tail. Um, cause we do see a lot of tail issues, so making sure that's all okay. Same thing with the back legs. Um, and then I usually kind of flip them over, look at their skin on their belly, look at the cloaca, um, make sure we don't have any problems there. 
Um, usually we'll check and see if it's a male or a female, especially if you're unsure. Um, and then as far as um, like listening to the heart and lungs, um, the best thing, it's hard to hear um, a reptile uh, really well because of the scales and just because of their anatomy. So one thing we do is we take a piece of gauze and get it wet and kind of put it right here over their back. And then when we listen with the stethoscope, um, then that actually cuts down the noise of the scales so that we can actually hear um, what we should be hearing. Um, it's really difficult to hear a heart on most heartbeat on most reptiles. And so if we're concerned about the heart for any reason, we will pull out a special monitor um, that lets us actually listen to a heartbeat. Um, so the big reason for doing this is so that we can detect any problems before your bearded dragon starts showing signs of illness. This is why it's important. We recommend a checkup uh, at least once a year. Reptiles are very good at hiding their clinical signs of illness and pretending like everything is fine. So sometimes uh, by the time you find out that something's going wrong, it, they can be really sick and more difficult to turn around. So early detection is kind of key for a lot of this. Yeah, and, and that kind of leads right into one of the things we, we did on our Facebook page <laughs> and we put out the questions, you know, what do you guys want to learn more about when it comes to your bearded dragon health? And a lot of the topics that we're going to be covering tonight are exactly what you asked for. Um, I, I think what we'll start with and what a lot of people are interested, interested in is what are the most common health issues that you see in bearded dragons in your practice? Yeah, so actually most, some of the most common conditions that we see are a lot of the ones you guys asked about. Um, so parasites um, by far is probably one of the most common things we see along with metabolic bone disease. Um, and that comes from um, poor husbandry, we'll get into that. Um, there are a couple other things that bearded dragons um, specifically are more prone to than other reptiles. Um, one's a skin condition called yellow fungus. Um, there's a type of viral infection called at adenovirus. Um, and then we do see other things like upper respiratory infections, problems with egg laying, uh, things like that. <laughs> but, but really, so it sounds like the, the most common issues really are, are parasites, internal parasites. So we can yes. break that down even further. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're looking for coccidia, we're looking mm -hmm. for pinworms, yeah, what else? What are and some then other? Um, the other big one is protozoal organisms and there are several different kinds of that. There's trichomonas, there's giardia, um, hexamida, there can be lots of different kinds, but those are the big, th kind of the big three that we usually see because most of our, all of our bearded now are captive bred. So it's pretty rare for us to see other parasites just because they're not exposed to that sort of thing. Um, but the ones that we do see are actually all things that are found normally in small amounts in our captive U.S. bearded dragon population. So they all have pinworms, they all have protozoa, um, pretty much everybody now has coccidia. That's pretty widespread in our population. So for a normal adult healthy bearded dragon, if you find a few of those organisms on a fecal exam, it's usually not a concern. Um, but if they get out of hand, that's when it can become a concern. So, mm -hmm. so let's talk a, a, a little bit about that. Is, what are some symptoms that the viewer should be looking for in, in order to say, you know what, it's time to go get that fecal done at my local vet? What, what, what would the bearded dragon display? Yeah, so um, probably some of the most common things we see are um, diarrhea or other loose stool, blood in the stool, um, a really foul odor to the stool. I mean, you guys know your bearded poop doesn't smell great anyway, but um, it, if it has a more distinct odor than usual, a lot of times they um, will go off food um, and stop eating. Um, every now and then we see ones that will regurgitate um, or be more lethargic than usual. So those are the big ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how about pinworm? Mm -hmm. we, we've seen a lot of pinworm out there as well. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know that I see as much disease from pinworms um, as I do from coccidia and from protozoal organisms. Um, coccidia, especially in um, really young dragons, um, can be more problematic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's important, guys. The, the majority of the emails that Mike and I get at Carolina Classic Dragons, the, 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 the majority of the questions are always related or seem to always be related to parasites. It's important, if you see these symptoms that Dr. Leonetti's talk about, talking about, get a fecal done. You know, get in there and get the, exam, the physical examination done and get that fecal done so you can identify exactly what the source is. And let's talk about some of the meds that are out there that are being used to treat some of these organisms. Yeah, the, the big thing and part of the reason we encourage a fecal exam is to know exactly what you have. Uh, because of those three 
big groups of parasites we were talking about, every one of those is treated with a different medication. So you can't just kind of quote unquote deworm your dragon and get everything that um, could be a problem. Um, so for pinworms and other worms, uh, Panicure is a common one, um, or Fimbendazole, it's sold under different names. There are other meds that you can use for that too, um, Pyrantel, Strongid. Um, for protozoa, we're usually looking at metronidazole, um, also called Flagyl. Um, for coccidia, there's, um, there's Albon, there's Baycox, there's Panagiril, and there's certainly different um, kind of pros and cons to uh, picking the different ones that we do, you know. Um, and part of this, um, you know, another reason why it's good to have a veterinarian involved is that uh, over the years, especially with like coccidia, we've seen resistance develop to certain, um, to certain drugs. So um, having someone who's able to treat it properly for you is always uh, a benefit too. Yeah, and that, and that kind of rolls into something that we've talked a lot about uh, off camera is that there's a lot of drugs being available across the internet and whatnot. And, and what we are seeing is this resistance or not seeing a reaction to these meds from a bearded dragon. So it's important to know the quality control of where these meds are coming from, what percent of the active ingredient is in these medications, and really you're only going to get that from a licensed veterinarian. So it's important to, to get your dragon in and, and, and get, by the time they're showing symptoms, it doesn't take long for them to go downhill. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get in early. We want to reiterate that. And what we want to talk about too is that most of these most common illnesses really occur because of bad husbandry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we, we touch on that, we talk about cleanliness. What are some of the things, what are some of the agents that folks could be using at home in order to prevent pinworm yeah. outbreaks, mm -hmm. coccidia outbreaks? Yeah, so um, one thing that we see a lot is that parasites will flare up in times of stress. So any sort of stress will weaken a reptile's immune system. So, um, you know, if your temperatures aren't warm enough, if your diet is not appropriate, th different things like that. Um, and so, but I also see a lot during stressful times, like during brumation or during breeding season or th that sort of thing as well. Um, and uh, like Dave was mentioned about um, cleanliness, uh, most of these parasites, especially like pinworms, the eggs of the pinworm are what is shed in the feces. And the eggs are made to withstand harsh environmental conditions. So they can live in your bearded dragon's enclosure forever. Um, and if your beardy's walking around and tongue flicking things, then he's picking those up again. If the crickets are running through his poop, then every time he eats, then he's re-ingesting them. And so basically they can get reinfected over and over and over. And that's how some of these um, infections develop too. So um, if your bearded dragon does have parasites, what we usually suggest is that when we do the treatment, that you take everything out of the cage, that you scrub everything down with hot soapy water, rinse it really well, um, and then we usually use some sort of disinfectant, like a dilute bleach solution or um, an ammonia solution or chlorhexidine, um, something like that. You spray everything down, you let it sit, and then you rinse it. And one of the things that I think is important is to change that up. Like we talk about variety in the diet, mm -hmm. change up your cleaning agents too, so that you're yeah. not using the same thing all the time, and that's making sure that you're kind of targeting maybe different uh, species and organisms that are going in the cage. Also baking, right? I mean, you can, if you, yes. somebody's mm -hmm. using some driftwood, you can throw it in the oven at 350 for mm -hmm. a half hour. Um, there's a, lots of different ways to clean what's inside that cage, and it's important to do so really on a routine, on a routine basis to, to prevent having any of these uh, outbreaks in your dragon. So one of the other things that we've talked about is MBD, metabolic yes. load disease. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Yes. Quite so, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we still see metabolic lung disease a lot, um, and that's partly because of misinformation that's out there on the internet or that people get from different sources. Um, and so, most of you probably know that metabolic lung disease comes from either lack of calcium in the diet or lack of UV lighting um, or a combination of both. Um, and so, when that happens, the reptile pulls calcium out of their bones to try to keep their bodily functions going and they start to develop bones that are soft, bones that are very brittle and break easily, um, stunted growth, and if the calcium gets low enough, you can actually have seizures and tremors and even death from it. Yeah. So is it reversible? Yes, it is reversible, but uh, depending on how severe the case is, um, some are easier to treat than others. A, a beardy who's already seizuring and tremoring is gonna be more difficult to turn around. Um, so uh, the main thing is to get your husbandry correct. So um, we were giving calcium, uh, UV light, uh, the best thing when you're 
treating one is to get them outside for natural sunlight. Um, nothing is, is as good as the sun. Um, one of the biggest problems we see people have is that they have a UV light, but they don't have it set up correctly. They have plastic blocking it, or the cage is in a window, uh, or things like that. So that's one of the biggest things you have to correct. Um, sometimes if the beard is really sick, then we'll need to do some supportive hand feeding, soaking, things like that as well. Yeah, I think it's a great point about getting them outside. And, and we've shown on, on, on the Facebook page with a UVB meter, even if you're only able to get your dragon outside in the shade, mm -hmm. you're still getting a lot more UVB than any of the bulbs can ever produce. So go ahead, get them, just get them in the shade. It doesn't have to be direct sun. And you do have to be careful if you're getting them in direct sun. And you know, if you want a little bit more information on that, go back and check out our husbandry video. I think that was episode two. Um, what else are we seeing? I mean, I, I'm starting to get a lot more calls on yellow fungus. Yeah, so yellow fungus is, uh, it's a, like it sounds, it's a fungal skin infection, um, also known as CANV, uh, as the abbreviation of the actual species name. Um, but one of the most common things that, one of the most common calls I get is my bearded dragon is not shedding correctly or that there are patches of shed that won't come off. Um, well, bearded dragons don't usually have shedding problems. So when people say that to me, it automatically makes me think about some sort of skin disease. And that's typically what it looks like, is a thick, crusty area of skin. Um, a lot of times it's yellow, which that's where it gets its name. Um, and so this is a fungus that can, unfortunately, can really be found anywhere, but it's very contagious. Um, between, um, between animals and uh, other reptiles have been reported to have it as well, not just bearded dragons. And, and unfortunately, we are seeing a rise in that, and, and that's why we really we stress, if you're going to have multiple dragons, you're bringing a new dragon in, quarantine, 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 yes. <laughs> and really watch for some of the symptoms that we're talking about, whether it be the NBD, whether it be the yellow fungus, um, and another, not a fungus, but another virus that we start, we're starting to hear more and more about is the adenovirus. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, which is now classified as an ad adenovirus, um, but it is something that most bearded dragons have. It's something that's in the U.S. captive population. Um, the adults carry it, and then it is spread to the babies um, during breeding, during birth. Um, and so the typical problem is babies that fail to thrive. So having a clutch where you lose several babies, um, or somebody might buy a young bearded dragon from a breeder or a pet store or whatever, and then they start to have problems with it um, in a few weeks to months. Um, so adults, even though they carry it, are usually not affected. Uh, it's the young ones that are. That's a good point. And, and another thing that we haven't touched much on is URIs, upper respiratory infections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another pretty yeah. common element. Definitely. Um, and that goes for bearded dragons and a lot of other reptiles too. Um, is respiratory infections. And once again, this goes back to husbandry because the most common reason that we see upper respiratory infections is stress um, and usually is low temperatures uh, because your temperature is important not only for your beardy's appetite and digestion, it's also really important for proper immune system function. So anytime we're also treating a respiratory infection, we usually recommend bumping up the temperature. It helps them fight it off better. What kind of symptoms should they be looking yeah, for so, in the URI? Um, the most common things we're gonna see are uh, discharge from the eyes or discharge from the nose, um, especially like crusty stuff on the face around the nose. Um, if it gets bad enough, then you might notice uh, like a coughing noise or seeing your bearded dragon doing this gulping motion kind of here at the throat, um, kind of moving the throat in and out. Um, if it's really bad, you'll actually see them open their mouth to breathe. Um, so it's different from when they're um, gaping, like if they're too warm, when they're just sitting with their mouth open, if they're actually open mouth breathing, they'll look like they're gasping. And treatment? Yeah, so Pretty treatment dry. is you usually... about the increase in the heat. What's a common antibiotic? That you yeah, use? so, I mean, most people have heard of Batril. Um, another one we use is Fortaz. Another one is Amikacin. Um, it kind of depends on uh, what's, what's exactly going on with the animal and what we think the most effective treatment will be in that sort of case. Because um, some drugs are injectable and some are oral, so some people aren't comfortable giving injections. And um, So then the other big thing, of course, is... Uh, bumping up your temperatures, uh, even if your temperatures are good, usually increasing them a few degrees will help as well. And then again, depending on how sick the bearded dragon is, sometimes those supportive care measures are needed, soaking and hand feeding and that kind of thing. And, and I think that kind of rolls right into brumation. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the topics that you guys really wanted to talk about was brumation. What is it? You know, what do I need to be doing during brumation? Do I need to wake up my dragon? Do I need to try to feed it? 
talk about what you see. I mean, because mm -hmm. what, what we see with brumation, sometimes when the dragons are coming out, they're prone to having those upper respiratory yes. infections, mm -hmm. the URIs. So. Yeah, so um, how we've been talking about stress, I mean, brumation is a somewhat stressful time for a beardy to go through. Um, and I see, um, you can say kind of what you see, but I see kind of two different things. I either have um, bearded dragons that tend to, when it starts getting cool outside, they just kind of slow down. They're not as active. They still eat, but not as much. Um, and that lasts through the cool winter months, and it can last several months. And then when spring comes around, they start coming out of it. And then I hear of others who kind of literally go under a log and sleep for a month, you know, or six weeks. Um, what's not normal is to go under a log and sleep for three or four months. Because <laughs> um, that's where I've had people think that their bearded dragon was just brumating and left it alone and then it went on so long, but then now you have a bearded who's sick um, because they've been cold, they're not eating, um, and especially if you cool things off and lower your temperatures, then they're going to be more prone to getting respiratory infections, stress, parasites, that sort of thing. And something else to keep in mind, probably the most common presenting complaint to us as veterinarians is a reptile who is not eating or is lethargic. And there are so many different things that can cause that. Um, and so brumation is one of those things. Um, so it's easy to kind of chalk something up to brumation and ignore or miss a medical problem. So that's something you don't want to uh, overlook. Yeah, and I think it's important to you know, some people out there are inducing brumation, and we've always stressed at CCD, it's a natural cycle, let them do it themselves. We have, I mean, we're here at what, the second week in August, and we have dragons that are brumating right now, and they just naturally will go, you know, under the newspaper. We don't, we're not doing anything special. We're not cutting back on the photo period. We're not decreasing the temperatures. It's just, an, it's natural, it's innate in these, these animals to, they'll do it on their own, what I think, and the suggestion that I make is you're going to have days where the dragon will be up and active, and it'll be moving around a little bit. Soak them, make sure they stay hydrated, and offer them some food. If they take it, fine. If they don't, don't worry about it. You may, that, that dragon may be up then, and it's not going to brumate anymore, or you may see that dragon go down a couple of days later. Um, the, the, the thing to watch for in these captive animals is just... Make sure you're observing them. You know, know what's normal, normal for them for your for that individual dragon. And if it's something that's happening that's atypical, get them to your vet for the physical exam. Um, so we've covered a lot. I mean, we've got we've covered the URIs, we've got the parasites, MBD, yellow fungus, the adenovirus, mm -hmm. to pronounce it correctly, mm -hmm. which is a, a form of the adenovirus, and. Um, I guess we've covered everything. Anything else that you want to make sure we touch base on? Um, the biggest thing that I, uh, a couple things we've already mentioned, but uh, like Dave was saying, kind of know what's normal for your dragon. And if you see anything that concerns you, give us a call. I mean, we always tell people we would rather you come in and have us tell you that everything is fine than have you overlook something. Because one of the biggest things with reptiles, just because they're so, um, they're so stoic, they don't let on that they're sick, a lot of times they go on being sick for a long time and people know that your beardy can go a week without eating and be okay and so people let them go for weeks or months before they come in and so the sooner you bring them in the sooner we can usually help because um, the sicker they get the longer something goes on it's a great mm -hmm. point well i want to thank you very much for being a guest on the Dona vision we're thank lucky, you for we're having me to have you close by and uh guys don't forget make sure you're getting a physical exam annually get the people's done.